Mortgage rates are officially over 7%. Mortgage demand dropped to a 25 year low and home sales plummeted over 50%. So the question that both you and I are thinking is how much worse is this going to get before it starts to get better? And when will things actually start to get better for the real estate market? That's what we will be trying to figure out in today's video. Now, I think at this point in time, it's safe to say that the feds have officially popped the real estate market. I could be wrong, but with all the headlines and media focused on the real estate market's tragedies, people are pulling their money out by the thousands. Then throw in a major hurricane hitting one of the hottest real estate markets in the country on top of the feds continuously raising interest rates. And I think it would be safe to say that the real estate market has indeed popped. Now, what we do know with certainty is that the feds have another two meetings this year, one in the beginning of November and one in the middle of December. Now, there's a really big chance that we will see another rate hike at each of these meetings, most likely because inflation is kicking our behinds if you haven't noticed. Last month, inflation jumped to 8.2% versus a year earlier and hotter than expected through a slight decline from August. So we came down from August into September, but you know, year over year, we're up 8.2%, which isn't good. But the problem, however, is core inflation, which most people don't realize there's two different ones. Core inflation strips out food and energy costs, which jumped to its highest level since 1982 last month. Now that's a real problem. It's been almost nine months since the feds first raised rates and inflation is still going up. So unless the feds get this handled in the next couple of weeks, which honestly appears to be impossible, mortgage rates will continue to go up. And I wouldn't be surprised if we started off the new year somewhere around eight to maybe eight and a half percent. But in regards to today, people are suffering. Mortgage rates are soaring and credit availability is the lowest it's been in over nine years. The rate on the popular 30 year fixed rate mortgage is now officially over 7%. It's honestly truly scary to think that we're approaching interest rates that my parents were paying when they bought their first house 27 years ago. They're truly shocked to be reliving a part of history they thought they would never see again. And I think what's even scarier is actually how many people are gonna watch today's video and not tap the like button for the YouTube algorithm. That's pretty scary if you ask me. So it's probably in everybody's best interest to just give it a tap. But anyways, lenders are now concerned that our weaker economy can lead to a rise in mortgage delinquencies. Obviously not at the rate it was back in 2008, but higher than we've seen in a long time. If this is the case, however, we can learn from our past mistakes and ready ourselves for good deals. 2008, if you guys don't remember, destroyed a lot of people financially, but at the same time, there were actually more millionaires made during that recession. Now it's the people that had money to buy foreclosed homes with cash that made out like a bandit. And if you don't have enough cash to buy any of these homes outright, like most people, then you don't really actually have to worry because there are other ways to take advantage of the possible recession that we're in or entering. And not only does the housing market go on sale, but you know, so does other things like the stock market. You know, it's not every day that we see, you know, blue chip stocks like Tesla and Apple 25% off from their highs. And we know with certainty that they're most likely going to be going back up to those same rates at some point in the next couple of years. Now, regardless, we're quickly entering though a market where people on either side are getting nailed, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Starting on the buyer side though, people are struggling to obtain mortgages. In recent times, mortgage rates are so high and many people no longer are qualifying. We're now seeing the mortgage credit availability index at its lowest level since March of 2013. And this index measures the difficulty of getting a mortgage in the US by calculating how eligible a borrower is on a loan and also the lender's tolerance for risk. People need to realize is that we're no longer living in 2020 when everything was free and people were just blowing money like there's no tomorrow. If we wanna slow down inflation, then people need to realize that the unrealistic phase we were living in is officially over and hopefully not coming back. Because if the feds didn't print an endless supply of money to give away in 2021, we wouldn't be in the situation today. And now we're paying it all back plus interest in the form of inflation. No longer can you walk into a bank and get a $40,000 personal loan handed to you like on a silver platter. Today, credit availability is much tighter than it was then, both in terms of credit requirements and the type of loans offered. And because of this nationwide, roughly 64,000 home purchase agreements fell through in August, equal to 15.2% of homes that went under contract that month. As for Florida, things aren't going so well either. What was once one of the 
most hottest real estate markets in the country is now turning out to be the worst. I don't understand if you guys truly understand the extent of the damage that happened in Florida, which is where I live. Now, specifically, I live in Fort Myers, which was in the eye of the storm. And when the storm finally passed, everything, and I mean everything, from the coast inward for about 40 miles was completely destroyed, literally swept away by the ocean or carried away by 150 mile per hour winds. What's crazy is the winds actually carried away most of the insurance companies too. The amount of damage that some insurance companies are paying out for is putting them out of business, literally. And others are actually afraid it will happen to them and they're doing the next best thing, which is fleeing the state. Now, a total of nine companies have left Florida so far. And all of this has obviously caused pending home sales to plunge 58% year over year in Cape Coral during the four weeks ending October 16th in the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Now that's nearly twice the nationwide decline of 32%. And pending sales also slumped in Naples by 52% and Northport by 51%. And don't think the East Coast wasn't affected because they got it pretty bad too. Pending sales fell 47% in Miami, 46% in Jacksonville, and 43% in West Palm Beach. They were also down more than 40% in Deltona, Tampa, and even Orlando. And I mean, honestly, it all makes sense. Because of the storm, all the people that were potentially about to close on a house backed out because either A, there was no more house to buy, or B, they were scared away from the thought of this happening to them after they just spent... I don't know, 600,000 at 1.8 million on a brand new house. With buyers getting nailed left and right, their best friend, Mr. Mortgage Lender, is also beginning to feel the pressure of the market. Now, the first time in a long time, the mortgage industry is seeing its first lenders go out of business. Who would have guessed it? Some are even speculating this wave of mortgage lender bankruptcies will be the worst thing that hit them since 2008. Now, if any of you remember that horrible time during 08, this potential mortgage industry crisis will be a little bit different. Since 2008, new law have been passed to prevent that event from repeating itself. And now there are stricter rules for subprime borrowers, and most major banks decided to no longer offer mortgages anymore since the crash. Now, the market is now predominantly owned by independent lenders, issuing 68% of all mortgages in 2020. And obviously, an independent lender is at more risk to market shifts than a major bank or corporation, especially if the lender is borrowing money himself, which most likely they all are doing because that's literally all they know within their business. That's all they do. The most recent company to go under was called First Guarantee Mortgage Corporation, which filed for bankruptcy, saying it failed after it made loans earlier this year that dropped in value. Of course, it was holding on to these loans until it had enough to bundle into bonds and sell to investors, and it had been temporarily funding them with a line of credit. So once again, this proves my point. This is yet another reminder to people to really consider taking on debt to leverage an investment, or honestly, any debt for that matter. Taking on debt is literally gambling with your future. You're promising to pay someone with future money you haven't yet gotten. And obviously, nobody can predict what's going to happen, so it's honestly not worth the headache to getting involved in that mess. And as for Guarantee, they employed 600 people before it filed bankruptcy in June. What's crazier is they even made $10.6 billion, billion dollars with a B, in loans last year, and they are still going bankrupt because they decided to play the leverage game, which honestly is a terrible, terrible idea to do. Days before seeking core protection, the company fired 471 workers because it couldn't get enough financing to overcome a cash crunch. Now, things obviously aren't much better for sellers either. It's not just the buyers getting hit. In September, sales of new single family houses fell 10.9% from August. However, the median sale price for a new home for some odd reason rose to $470,000, up by more than $34,000 from August revised figures. And if we had to speculate here, the probable reason that this is happening is because there are still low levels of existing inventory and a whole lot of buyer demand, even in the market we're seeing today. Now, as of October 21st, compared to the same week in 2021, household inventory for, for houses is up 35.3%. I know this might sound like a really good thing. Oh my God, we're up 35% from last year. But you need to remember that last year was an anomaly for the housing market. And when you compare this year to two years ago in 2020, inventory is actually only up 
4%. And what's worse is if you compare them to 2019 inventory prior to the pandemic, then we're still down 38.4%. So until we literally see demand cool off and more inventory goes for sale in the market, home prices are going to keep going up. And even with all this going on, I do believe the feds are still doing the right thing, even though it's a little too late for that. But I do believe we are headed in the right direction. And when the feds finally decide to raise rates again, don't expect to see an immediate reaction within the market. It does take a few months to really get the effect. And I'm a strong believer that the rate hikes in November and December have already been factored into the stock market. What I mean by that is I don't think it will cause a major drop in the market like we've seen when it first happened. And I truly believe we've either hit the bottom or we're pretty damn close, like 5% away. But regardless, this is a great opportunity to take advantage of what's on sale. Typically, the stock market recovers before the economy does too. So there's a good chance that the stock market will be in the green moving forward forward for the next few years. And as for the housing market, I don't think we're going to see any like major price corrections like we saw with the stock market happening to the national average. Obviously, there will be bigger drops in uh, home prices in different areas, but I also have a feeling that we might see a few more rate hikes in 2023 if inflation doesn't cool off by the end of the year, which seems to be that way. And if that's the case, then I would honestly expect that the feds are going to stop raising rates maybe mid 2023 and actually start reducing the rates back down to the bottom by the end of 2024. I'd say by 2025, we would be kind of back on track as if nothing happened these past few years. Otherwise, that's it for today's video. Happy Monday and have a wonderful rest of your week. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Peace.